Ministers uh, are here on time and it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Sam, Samuel West, uh, who is going to do some readings, uh, at least one from Remy Kanazi. Those of you who are here, if you saw Remy Kanazi, the American Palestinian poet, when he was over, he was brilliant. Uh, but I'm sure it'll be just as good uh, read by Sam West. Sam West. Hello, I'm going to read you a poem by Remy Kanazi and then a short extract from a letter from Gaza. A Poem for Gaza by Remy Kanazi, December the 29th, 2008. I never knew death until I saw the bombing of a refugee camp. Craters filled with disfigured ankles and splattered torsos, but no sign of a face. The only impression of fading scream. I never understood pain until a seven-year-old girl clutched my hand, stared up at me with soft brown eyes, waiting for answers. But I didn't have any. I had muted breath and dry pens in my back pocket that couldn't fill pages of understanding or resolution. In her other hand, she held the key to her grandmother's house. But I couldn't unlock the cell that caged her older brothers. They said, we slingshot dreams so the other side will feel our father's presence. A craftsman. Built homes in areas where no one was building. And when he fell, he was silent. A 50 caliber bullet tore through his neck, shredding his vocal cords too close to the wall. His hammer must have been a weapon. He must have been a weapon. Encroaching on settlement hills and demography. So his daughter studies mathematics. Seven explosions times eight bodies equals four congressional resolutions, seven Apache helicopters times eight Palestinian villages equals silence and a second Nakba. Our birth rate minus their birth rate equals one sea and 400 villages re-erected, one state plus two peoples, and she can't stop crying. Never knew revolution, or the proper equation. Tears at the paper with her fingertips, searching for answers, but only has teachers. Looks up at the sky and sees stars of David demolishing squalor with hellfire missiles. She thinks back words and memories of his last hug before he turned and fell. Now she pumps dirty water from wells, while settlements divide and conquer. And her father's killer sits beachfront with European vernacular. She thinks back words while they think backwards of obscene notions and indigenous confusion. This, our land, she said. She's seven years old. This, our land, she said. And she doesn't need a history book or a schoolroom teacher she has these walls, this sky, this refugee camp. She doesn't know the proper equation, but she sees my dry pens, no longer waiting for answers, just holding her grandmother's key, searching for ink. This is a short extract from a letter from Gaza by Najwa Sheikh, which is from the UNRWA website. January 2009. Today, I saw the tears shed by the mothers who had lost the safe shelter of home. They are now unable to give more to their children, as if drained from any feelings, from any love, any security. They are distracted by their painful memories that, as one mother told me, may take an age to be healed and forgotten. The ch children's simple wishes of finding their toys, their books, their favorite things, were very hard for me to listen to. Their innocent eyes and their shaky hands when recalling horrific events make it difficult to believe in peace. 
A question is left there in their small heads and tiny hearts. What is the point in teaching us human rights while we cannot experience any of these rights? Why am I, as a child, unable to live in a safe house? Why am I not treated as a human being while many others who are no different from me in other places of the world practice these rights? While the Israelis seek a better life for their children, at the same time then they destroy our simple homes, our lives, our dreams, leaving us nothing but a toll of painful memories and a bitterness. This will remain consuming us from the inside until finally it takes its revenge. How can they ask us to be normal, logical and life-loving people while they teach us how to hate? How can peace ever come if it comes at the cost of our lives and the lives of our children? <laughs>